Hey guys, it's Arshan. Thanks for tuning in today. We're going to be talking about adding asset protection to your planning. So uh, if you're tuning in here, if you've been watching the channel, we talk a lot about planning your assets, planning your business, planning your career, uh, planning yourself for just getting through whatever might be next. Asset protection planning is really something you can layer into the other stuff you're doing. For instance, we recently did a video about moving your business to a new state. And if you haven't seen that yet, go check that out here on the channel. Um, it's one of our recent prior videos, at least recent to this, depending on when you're watching this. Um, so asset protection planning is something you can just layer in with that. If you're moving your business to a new state uh, and you're going to redo your corporate documents and maybe move your assets, why not at the same time? Think about how to add layers of asset protection to it uh, from the provisions in your agreement through who's holding the assets through potentially having holding companies. There are a lot of different ways we can accomplish asset protection planning, but why not just layer it into your planning? It's a great time to do it. Um, as always today, we're jumping into things. We'll talk about some legal issues. This is not specific legal advice for you. Please consult your counsel. We're just here to educate and entertain, give you some ideas about legal issues. Go talk to your lawyer, your counsel about your specific situation. Also, this is not financial or investment advice. It is smart to think broader as you're doing these things. Um, sure, you can just do the basics to get by, uh, to do what you have to do to exist, do what you have to do to have a business, do what you have to do to have shared ownership of assets. Uh, but for just some more effort, depending on how complex of a structure you want to do, you can layer in these concepts of asset protection and thinking bigger. And it's smart to think broader than just the mere uh, getting by or basics of your business. So what we're talking about today, and we'll give you some ideas about it, is really layering this into your overall planning and just making it part of your thought uh, process. Anytime you're structuring, it's a good time to think about asset protection. Now, most people get the first layer of asset protection, which is having an entity, right? That is just a very common thing. I would say when most people call me to form a new company, Corporation LLC, one of the first things they're thinking about is asset protection. I want to separate that business assets and liabilities from my personal assets and liabilities. So whatever happens in that business doesn't come to me, right? Most people are thinking in terms of that firewall. They've gotten that far in the analysis. They haven't thought about the next layers, which is, you know, what if there's claims against the business uh, for their personal activities, right? So you have an owner operator uh, of a vehicle, you know, that is owned by the business truck driver. We've talked a lot about truck drivers in California in particular lately. Uh, that truck driver not only has, not only does that truck have liability if there's an accident, but the operator uh, potentially has liability, right? So just separating it that way is not necessarily going to be enough to fully protect your personal assets, right? You need insurance and other things layered in there. Um, so that layer of asset protection often isn't thought about. Also not thought about is just what happens if that whole system has a problem, right? So maybe you have a bunch of assets in your business, cars, buildings, uh, inventory, all of this together. If there's one claim on that, if everything's bundled in the same entity, everything's going to basically be subject to the claims of that lawsuit at the same time. So anytime you're moving stuff around, structuring, bringing in new investors, there's potentially the opportunity to add in some layers of this asset protection planning uh, to protect things. And then from your personal assets, you know, what do you do to protect those assets, particularly if you are the operator of the vehicle, if you are a professional, there are things you can do at home potentially with your spouse or trust or other things to separate your personal assets up. Uh, one way to think about this is in terms of liability baskets. Basically, the courts will respect uh, legal structures and entities to some extent, right? It's clear, absent, unusual circumstances that most courts in most states uh, respect an LLC or corporation as being a legal entity separate and distinct from the owner. That creates a basket. Um, obviously, you're a legal person. 
you know, your spouse is a legal person, your children are legal persons, you have lots of different baskets around you, and then you can start layering in more entities and more trusts. Everybody who is a legal person or entity with their own assets and liabilities becomes a potential basket for holding assets, but also a basket that might be the first layer of a liability attack, right? So you want to think in terms of how is everything separated and organized? Uh, and then what you want to do is say, okay, well, what? how much exposure is around that basket? And some baskets are going to have more exposure than others. Sticking with our trucking example, the truck and the trailer are going to have a lot of liability exposure around it, right? It's just inherent with being in a truck, right? You can create a lot of damage uh, in an accident, whether to other property or unfortunately people as well, right? So you can, you can create a lot of injury. That is a high liability basket. Uh, meanwhile, a basket that maybe holds uh, a piece of real estate that has an office building in it for a CPA firm. Um, now that basket, yes, there are liability issues with real estate. You could be exposed to claims for a trip and fall or other things related to the real estate, but a much lower exposure liability basket than, say, a tractor trailer. Um, and what you want to do is look at separating these if you can. Let's say you have a trucking company, you have an office, you have trucks, and you have operators of the trucks. You know, do you want the office building that you own to be in the same LLC as the trucks? Maybe, but maybe it would be good to separate those out and put them in different liability baskets. So anytime you're doing structure, you want to think about these baskets and where you can hold your assets and liabilities. Ultimately, one of the first things you're probably going to want to do is separate everything out so that everything doesn't get cross contaminated in the event of an exposure. And then think about how each basket can be attacked. What are the likely attacks on these baskets? You can do this analysis after the fact, after you set it up. But the best time to do this is in a theoretical exercise prior to setting up your companies, your LLCs, your entities, so that you can look at how each basket can be attacked. All right, if I put my building here, what are the ways somebody might have a claim against my building? If I put my operating company, the company that actually goes in and runs the business, you know, takes the orders from customers, produces the final results. If I put that in its own entity, maybe that entity that is operating is leasing the building from another entity and maybe leasing trucks or other equipment from another entity. What are the avenues of attack from the operating entity, right? Somebody gets sick from the operation, somebody gets injured during the operation, etc. And then maybe we put our equipment in another basket. How could that equipment have claims against it? Could it be liens of creditors from borrowing? What is it, right? So we look at each basket and we look at how it can be attacked. And that allows us to then get the appropriate insurance for that basket, um, to think about what a worst case scenario is, where that basket has a substantial liability claim and has to go bankrupt. How does that affect the in overall system? So what we're doing is we're doing a lot of what if gaming of what happens and what our overall system looks like if there's problems with individual sections. And we just prioritize which baskets and which areas we want to put the attention on because we want to maximize the ink outcome. And as always, you know, reality will kick in on asset protection in that there will be more possibilities and ways to do asset protection than financial resources and time will permit. So we'll have to pick and choose our battles. We've got to understand the limits too. Uh, there are just some things asset protection just doesn't do. Uh, if you are the doctor, you are the dentist, you are the lawyer, you are the accountant, uh, you are the truck driver, and you're actually in the business doing the work, it's going to be hard to shield your personal liability from the actual activities of the business through structuring. You may want to do insurance. You may want to do planning with your personal assets. There's things we can still do, but there are limits. And we can't just completely set everything up to where no creditor will ever get anything, right? There are going to be potential liability issues, even in a asset protection structure. But when done properly... 
what we can do is potentially expose a portion of the assets to claims and not expose every asset to every claim. Uh, you'll want to revisit the structure periodically. So anytime you're making changes to your structure, as your business grows, as things change in your business, you want to go back and revisit this asset protection structure. So have a meeting regularly with your lawyers, with your accountants, with your advisors, with your board, and say, this is how we're structured. Does this still make sense? And if you're looking at doing expansion or change to your business, it's another great opportunity to revisit this as well. Um, asset protection can really become part of your core thinking. And that really is a great way to do it. Yes, you can stop and build a new structure uh, right wherever you are now and look at things and have some good advice come in there and build a structure. But better if you're doing it proactively with a future orientation. What is my business going to look like in the future? What happens when I add this new segment? And then periodically updating and revising things as you go. That is a great way to keep things current and to keep that protection going. So uh, make this part of your thinking. Think about this as part of your business process. You're thinking about how to grow a business, how to increase your revenue, how to do, accomplish the things you want to accomplish in business and protecting those assets that are helping your life and your business as part of your planning process. We'd love to hear your comments. Don't put anything confidential in the comments on YouTube. Obviously, it's public, so no private information. But otherwise, I'd love to hear your comments and general questions you have. Um, can't do specific advice, but if I see something that would be an interesting topic for a future video, I may well pick it up. So join me in the comments. Let me know things. Don't put anything confidential there. And I look forward to talking to you soon. If you haven't done so yet, please subscribe to the channel. Ring the bell for notifications. Tell your friends. Share this video. And uh, give it a like so more people can see it. Thanks for tuning in today. Hope you check out some other videos on the channel.